Hey guys, this is Nick with another video. Today, we're gonna talk a little football, football photography. Um, later today, I'm gonna be shooting a high school football game and I figured this is a perfect time to talk a little bit about one of my favorite types of photography, sports photography. So today, we're going to be shooting a football game and the Friday Night Lights football games are notoriously dark. It's not dark yet, and in fact, like the first half of the game is probably not gonna be dark because it's the first game of the season and it hasn't gotten dark um, early yet. We're still at daylight savings time, but later in the game, later in the season, we're gonna be shooting in some severely dark situations. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the gear that I'm gonna take with me to shoot it, and then we're going to include some footage from atop of my camera. We'll see how that goes. I'm just gonna mount my cell phone on top of my camera and try to get some footage for you guys. So anyways, let's talk a little bit about gear. Uh, so my setup is gonna be two cameras. I'm going to have my uh, one of my cameras mounted on a monopod, and even though the, the lens that I'm using has image stabilization on it, I'm still gonna be using a monopod simply because my arms will get tired from holding my camera up for an entire game. Um, it's so much easier just have it on a monopod. So bring in the monopod for this one. My second camera is going to be on my Black Rabbit strap. Uh, this is one of the few times I really like to use a strap. Um, the, this particular strap is a sport model. It's nice because it goes underneath your arm. When you le lean over and stuff, it stays put. And with my second camera, it's actually the camera that I'm recording this with right now. Uh, it's gonna be my Canon 6D with my 16 to 35 wide angle lens on it. That way, I have my long lens on my monopod. I'm tracking the action. And uh, if, they if the action gets really close to me, I just, go like this, I grab my second camera and I lift it up and snap some shots as they're getting really close to me. Um, so wide angle shots are actually some of the, the coolest shots you get and you can't get that with a 70 to 200. Okay, so let's talk about the other gear I'm taking. The, the other camera I'm going to be taking is my 5D Mark III with my 70 to 200 lens. Uh, this is the, the equipment that I own. It's not my favorite to shoot football with. Ideally, like a 400 to 8 is like the perfect uh, football lens, but they're also like $8,000. So I haven't invested in that yet, but 70 to 200s can still get some pretty good shots. You just need to wait for the action to come a little bit closer to you. Um, this is an f2.8 lens. This is what is referred to as a fast lens. And the reason they call a lens fast is because it lets in lots of light, which allows you to speed up your shutter speed. So you can actually freeze the action. It, it makes sports photography so much easier when you can freeze the action. Otherwise you just end up with a whole bunch of blurry shots. Okay, so I'm going to be mounting my, uh, mounting my camera on my monopod. And the reason for it, once I do it here, is because I can get it set up, get it the right height, and I can rest it like this. That way, if I need to grab my other camera, I can just go like that, and my arms don't get tired from shooting the entire, the entire game. Also, I'm using my battery grip, which I don't always use. Um, the battery grip is super nice in this situation, because you can go to vertical orientation and your stuff's right here rather than having to move your arm all crazy like this. So another, t another thing that I do during football uh, photography is I use back button focus. Sports photography is one of the best times to use back button focus because you don't have to focus for every shot and if something comes in the way of what you're trying to focus on, say I'm trying to shoot the quarterback and somebody, a wide receiver comes right in my path and I see him enter the frame, I just stop focusing for a second, let him pass and then I start focusing again once he's passed. And in that way I can get sharp shots of whatever I'm attempting to get um, in focus. I can get them sharp and then have the foreground blurry and, and maintain focus on what it is that I'm trying to focus on. Also, I'm going to be using either single point focus, I'm going to be changing my focus point to a single focus point, 
or I'm going to use one of the small clusters that's available on the 5D Mark III. Um, but I recommend single point focus because you're actually deciding what it is that you're going to be focusing on. And if you let autofocus do it and something comes in, in front of, of the player that you're trying to shoot, for example, the running back is coming towards you and there's all these guys going to tackle him, it's going to focus on whatever, whoever's closest rather than your running back. So back button focus and single point focus, these are gonna be huge, huge advantages for getting nice sharp shots. Okay, so the shutter speed, our settings, are going to be, they're going to be astronomical because as it gets darker, our ISO just keeps getting higher and higher. And by the end of tonight, I guarantee that I'm going to be shooting at, at least 8,000 ISO, if not 10,000 ISO. Uh, because I am, I'm going to be shooting with my aperture wide open, F2.8, to let in as much light as I can that way. But I have to have a fast shutter speed in order to freeze the action. And in order to freeze the action, you need to be shooting ideally at one thousandth of a second. That's kind of the rule of thumb. Anytime you're photographing fast action, at about one thousandth of a second, you start freezing the action. If it starts getting darker and darker, and you have to, you can kind of go cheat and go down to one eight hundredth of a second, but you're gonna start getting some blurry shots at one eight hundredth of a second, shooting basketball, football, or anything really fast moving like that. So the goal is one thousandth of a second. And then you have to compensate for, the, for your exposure with your ISO. And like I said, we'll, we'll be starting fairly, fairly low on our ISO, maybe like ISO 640 or 500, we'll have to see. But as that sun gets lower and as the stadium lights are the only light that we really have, we're going to be shooting to like 8,000 if not 10,000 ISO. So that's why full frame cameras are, are kind of a big, a big advantage when it comes to football photography. Okay, so a couple other settings. I'm going to make sure that I'm shooting in my fastest continuous focus or continuous frame rate. Uh, that way I can take, at the 5D Mark III isn't the fastest camera in the world, but you know, it's like five frames a second or something. Not nearly as fast as like a, a, a D810 or something, but it's fairly fast. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, I'm going to be using custom white balances because stadium lights, they're all different. Um, so I'm just gonna use my Kelvin uh, white balance and just kind of dial that in. Most of that'll be done in post because I'm shooting raw. Use a nice fast card because if you listen, I'm shooting raw and listen how long it takes for my buffer to fill. I'll see if you can hear this. That's not too bad. And something like a 1DX would be way better, or even a 7D Mark II has a better buffer rate, but that's going to allow us to photograph a nice series of images. Like when, when, you're, when you see that, that moment happening, um, you can, you're gonna be able to capture it. So speaking of moments, you don't want to just spray and pray. You don't want to just hammer it down as soon as the play starts and then just like keep focusing and just keep firing shots. You want to wait until that moment. When you see something developing or something about to happen, try to, try to nail that moment. Wait for that, that perfect moment because you're gonna do a lot better job than your camera's frames per second will do because there's a lot of space in between each one of those shots. You're better off if you just tried to nail that exact moment. For example, like if you're shooting baseball and you're trying to get the moment of impact, you don't just start firing shots when he starts swinging, you try to time it perfect. And after a while, you get really good at that. So I'm going to, like I said, I'm gonna to try to get some footage from atop the camera. We'll see how that goes. Like I said, it's gonna be dark and I'm gonna be using my cell phone, so it's bound to be super grainy. But uh, we'll cut to some of that. And then afterwards, we'll take a look at some of the pictures and, and we'll see how it goes. So I hope this has been useful and we'll see you pretty soon. Okay, so the first thing you're going to notice is that I'm shooting from my knees, which can be pretty exciting when the play comes to you. And I'm also shooting downfield, because I'm hoping they'll run at me. Oh. Not on that one. 
So you'll see this line here is what you got to stay behind. Blaze going away from me, so I'm not, not even going to bother taking pictures. All right, so it's third and long, like really long. So I'm going to go downfield because I expect it to be a long pass. It's the only way they're going to get a first down. So, and they're going to get time to head down, down where the other teams are. Deep into Cardinals territory. Oh, we go! After a good or a bad play, make sure that you're uh, getting coach and player reaction shots. So the other team scored, perfect time to get a really mad picture of this coach. So uh, always be on the lookout for those kind of plays. Again, it's third and long. So we're going to be looking for a pass play here. I'm straight across from where the first down marker is. Should be a good place to be. Because they're moving the ball so well, I'm going to go down to the end zone just on a hunch that maybe they're going to score a touchdown, get a big play. So let's see what happens. Uh, there goes the momentum. So I was right, but I forgot to hit record. <laughs> Anyways, they just scored a touchdown and got these shots here. Alright, so game is pretty much done. We're going to head back to the computer and see how we did. Let's go check out the files. Sorry for the crappy video. Okay, so we're back at the computer. Uh, last night I took a thousand, one thousand photos, and here are my 25 selects. Actually, I've got about 30, 30 keepers from last night. Not the best keeper rate, but that's kind of how it goes when you're shooting football. So, as you can see earlier in the day, my settings up here our ISO 1000 at uh, f3.2, 1 12 50th of a second. I went down to 3.2 just to, you know, add a little bit of sharpness. And I could have probably lowered my ISO a bit because I did not need 1 12 50th of a second for these opening shots. But anything over a thousandth of a second is gravy. Um, you're really striving for that one one thousandth of a second and that's no problem to get uh before the before the ambient light goes down so i like to get some of these running out shots these are some of my favorite type of shots to get the uh students love getting them and then uh later on i'll show you how far we're cropping into these images here if we reset you can see yeah i'm cropping in quite a bit uh, just because, you know, I can't get close enough. I was only shooting with 200 millimeters. And that's why your best shots are always when the action's coming closer to you is because that's when you're, you know, getting the best resolution. But here, uh, once it goes sharp, um, 
these are the kind of moments I try to get with the quarterback with the the ball almost touching the hand. That way you really see him letting go but still have the ball in the frame. Uh, you can see once it goes sharp, you know, at 1,000 ISO, it's not too much noise. Um, but we're also cropping in a long ways on this one as well. So, um, like I said, some of my favorite shots are actually the wide angle shots that I was getting just because it tells a little bit more of the story. Um, shots like this later on. Well, and I also like to get panorama shots like that. I was using a, um, a UV filter, which I don't normally do, but because I'm I'm beating beating my camera against my leg and the 16 to 35 lens hood really doesn't offer very much protection for the front element. I use a lens uh, a uh, UV filter on my on my uh, wide angle lens. All right, so some of the earlier shots you can see how much sharper once it goes sharp, once Lightroom goes sharp here. You can see how much sharper some of these early shots are where our ISO was fairly low. Those shots are a lot sharper than these later ones that I'm shooting. Here I'm at 1,000th of a second, 8,000 ISO. I nailed my focus, but it just doesn't have that, that crispness that it does at the lower ISOs. Um, so yeah, later in, the later in the night, my uh, settings were... These were pretty much my settings. One thousandth of a second, 8,000 ISO. And even then, I'm having to boost the exposure on some of these. I find that once I, there's a big difference on my particular camera between 8,000 ISO and 10,000 ISO. So I would rather have it slightly underexposed and then just boost it up because 10,000 ISO just doesn't perform very well on the 5D Mark III. So some of the shots that I was getting are shots like this, shots like this, once it goes sharp. Lightroom's taking a little bit, but, you know, I nailed my focus, but they just don't come out super crisp when you're at the higher ISOs. And this is kind of what I'm getting. Um, so the way I like to process my shots, I like to do... We'll start with these that are fairly similar, shot with the same settings. If I totally reset this particular image, that's what it's looking like straight out of the camera. And the first thing I'll do is find my composition. And with sports photography, you want to fill the frame as much as you can with the action without losing too much image quality. And now uh, I'll set my white balance somewhere down in there and now I need to fix my exposure and now the grass is getting too overexposed so I'll bring down my highlights and then what I like to do is go down to my detail panel mask out some of my sharpness just by holding alt and dragging it over that way it's not trying to sharpen the out of focus areas because all that's really going to do is add noise Add a little bit of noise reduction, not too much, because you lose so much sharpness. And then what, I'll take an adjustment brush, reset it, I'll add some noise reduction to it, and I'm also going to decrease the shadows a bit. And then I'm just going to paint that into all the spots that are not critical for the shot. And that just kind of helps with the image quality a little bit, cleans it up, and that way we're not losing sharpness in, on our subject. Um, and then what I like to do once I get my basic settings right for all, all my different shots, I will select all the shots that are similar. I will hit sync. I will, um, first I'll check all, then I'll unselect crop, unselect local adjustments. That way any of the local adjustments I did with the, the, uh, the adjustment brush isn't going to be synced across and that way that it's not messing with my compositions and that way I have a fairly similar exposure and white balance across all the shots. Now one of the interesting things about this particular field, notice the exposure difference between this, same exact settings, and this, 
same exact settings. And the reason for that is because the fluorescent lights are actually flickering a little bit. So one moment they'll be darker and and more yellow, and then the next minute they'll be brighter and more green and a little bit cooler. So this shot I'm going to have to warm up a tiny bit and then go ahead and drop the exposure down a little bit just so because I want my my images to be consistent across all the different shots I took and then I'll do the same thing I'll add some noise reduction bring down my shadows and then just paint it in and that really adds some nice separation and stuff and cleans up all that noise that we we're noising all right that's it. Hopefully this has been useful for you. Uh, feel free to like, subscribe, and, uh, and send me some photos that you've been taking of your sports photography. All right. Catch you later. Bye-bye.